the final stage of the story of uh, respiration is oxidative phosphorylation or the electron transport train. It's where everything kind of comes together. It occurs in the mitochondria on the surface of the inner membrane. Uh, the membrane, if we look closely at it, has a series of carrier proteins. If you look carefully, you'll see that each one has a central pore, and through those pores, hydrogen ions are pumped into the intermembrane space. The hydrogen ion concentration gradient drives a molecule called ATP synthase. Protons moving back from the intermembrane space into the matrix through ATP synthase drives a reaction that converts ADP plus inorganic phosphate into ATP. And that is where the majority of ATP is made in respiration. It's called the electron transport chain because electrons are transported or transferred between the carriers. As each carrier takes the electrons, it uses some of the electrons' energy to pump the hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. So in this diagram you can see I've plotted the energy levels of the electrons approximately. And you can see that transfer from NADH hydrogen to the first electron transport chain and then use to pump electro uh, pump protons and then finally the transfer to the oxygen in making water all of those steps electrons lose their energy so they start off in a high energetic state and they go down to low energy it's very important that you understand that the oxygen is there as the final receptor of the electrons we can model the electron transport chain as shown here. <clears throat> so hydrogens transfer from the NADH onto carrier 1, protons are pumped into the space, electrons move to carrier 2, protons move across, carrier 3, protons move across, and then finally two protons are combined with oxygen and the electrons to make water. All those protons are then used uh, to drive ATP synthase. ATP synthase is a molecule that converts ADP plus PI to ATP and it's the proton gradient, concentration gradient between the intermembrane space and the matrix that drives that process. ATP produced, as you watch this process through again, think about the recycling that happens here. NADH is converted back to NAD and that goes back to glycolysis or the Krebs cycle. FADH is also recycled back to FAD. The ATP that is produced is transported around the cell and used and then comes back as ADP. The water that is generated from the oxygen is taken away and fresh, fresh oxygen is introduced to the mitochondria. So all of these things are recycled. By the way, the FAD that comes in, the FADH, donates its hydrogens and electrons between carrier 1 and 2. Therefore, less protons are produced per molecule and less ATP is produced from FADH2 than from NADH plus H+. Plus. Wait, 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 I haven't finished. Final point. In this diagram, you'll see there's no oxygen. Therefore, oxygen cannot act as the final acceptor for the electrons. So the carriers cannot pass electrons on to the next carrier. This means that hydrogen ions aren't pumped into the intermembrane space and ATP synthase isn't driven. In addition, NADH plus H plus or FADH2 cannot be oxidized back to NAD 
or FAD. The electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation cannot happen if there is no oxygen, so you have to use anaerobic respiration. OK, now we've finished. Just have a little look at the amount of ATP that is produced and how the numbers work themselves out.